welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with a very special Pen Resurrection Sunday video. It is the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature is stirring, except for Doug's mouse, because he's editing this resurrection video. I want to wish all of you who celebrate a very Merry Christmas and to all a happy holiday season and happy new year. I held this pen resurrection video until Christmas Eve because this pen and pencil set comes with such a romantic and heartwarming backstory. This is a Schaefer Triumph fountain pen and pencil set from 1945 in the original box. I won it in an eBay auction. It was very discolored, tarnished and grimy and had personalized engravings on both the pen and the pencil. And the vacuum filler fountain pen wasn't working. So I was able to get it fairly inexpensively. But not only was I able to get it back to its almost new and functioning condition, I was able to discover the original owners of the set. Mr. Joe Canzanari and his wife, Carlene Canzanari, were married around 1946, and I assume she gave this pen and pencil set to Joey, either when they were engaged or just married. I'm assuming this pen and pencil set was sold on eBay as part of an estate sale. So if you know or are related to Mr. and Mrs. Joe Canzanari and you're interested in this fountain pen and pencil set, please do not hesitate to contact me. Join me as I show you how I took this fountain pen from this to this right now. And here's what this 1945 Schaefer Triumph fountain pen and pencil set looks like after restoration. And this is what the fountain pen looked like before I started working on it. The gold was almost black and you could hardly read the Love Carlene engraving on the wide cap band. I'll show you a video of the restoration process I used to get the set looking like this. Then I'll talk about the history of this particular model of Schaefer, look at the parts and features, show some size comparisons and measurements, and then I'll provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, I'll give you my thoughts on this restoration. So I'm going to start to work on this Schaefer Triumph that I got. And I already started working on the pencil. So just to show you the difference in the gold, the pencil was exactly the same condition as the fountain pen. And in fact, it was like this. So that Love Carlene part was that dark and tarnished and the clip again looks black but this is how it comes up with a little bit of polish isn't that amazing so i've done nothing to the celluloid on here at all i've polished up all the gold bits and i've got new leads for it as well and the pencil's working perfectly so once i get working on the celluloid for the fountain pen i'll probably do the celluloid here as well polish it up get the scratches out but I'm going to start working on the fountain pen. I'm taking my time because this is a bit of a, a bear when it comes to fixing them. Getting that conical nib off of there, that Triumph nib. So I'm going to have to heat and soak and heat and soak to get that off of there. And I've also got new parts for the vac filler because this has not got a vacuum anymore. So we have to get the top off to get at the back. And I've got a special tool to take that uh, knob off of that rod as well. I've got a special tool to feed the rod through once we get that far. So I'm going to start working on this. Uh, I'm going to start by soaking it and trying to get the top off of it. So lots of soaking overnight, ultrasonic bath, and heating and soaking and heating and soaking. And I finally got it to budge this morning. Do the rest of the unscrewing here on camera. That's what she said. Okay, insert rod support A into slot B. That's what... And if you say that's what she said one more time, I'm going to pop you. And I've got the nib unit. Looks like it's coming out. Yes, indeed. So there's the nib unit. I think I'll put this in the ultrasonic bath for quite a bit. You can see there's a bit of adhesive right there. Might have been shellac. And I can get into that chamber. And get up to the light here, I can see little bit of that inside yeah I can see just a bit it's hard for me to see on camera here right now but I bet you that's picking that up so the next bit is to get that blind cap knob off of there and I've got this tool 
from Pen Tooling D11B that I think should fit that little nut down in there. So we get those blades into that nut like that. And we should be able to hold on to the cap and turn the nut. Yep, that's turning pretty well now. Yep, there we go. Sort of need three hands to be able to do this. So there's the nut come off. Take the wrench out. And there's that little screw nut. And this little plastic piece actually unscrews from the end of this rod. I'm going to be very careful with this because I'm sure you can't get a replacement for that. Come on. There we go. Now, the smartest thing to do right now is when you've got pieces that small is to get yourself a little container to put the bits in. And there I have my tiny bits in a little container so they don't go away. And now I've got this tool from Pen Tooling that actually screws on the back of that rod. There we go. Just like that. And you don't lose it. And you can thread the new one. You can thread it back again through there. There we go. The idea is to be able to get it through that hole again on the other side. Of course, I didn't need it to push it through, but I thought I'd give it a try. So I can take that tool off of there. And there's the barrel. And there is my plunger. This is the little part that it deflects against that feed back and forth. And when it gets to the bottom of the barrel, when it gets to about there, the barrel widens at that point and releases the vacuum. So right now, this seal isn't very good because bits of it have come off. And so I've got the new parts for this. We're going to keep that part and that part, but this, the washer that goes between will be replaced. So here I've got my plunger seals. Now there's two of each size in this packet I got it from Pen Tooling. So it'll be interesting to see which size this is. I've got a feeling they're the medium ones. This isn't the way they go on, but I'm just going to put this on the shaft and check it for size. And the closer washer for the packing unit once and if I get that out of there. This will be the repair items for that. So I need to get that off to get the washer on there. So I'm going to, I think that's glued on there. So I'm going to apply some heat. I'm going to soak it a bit. I'm going to apply some heat, soak it, apply some heat, and then try to tease it off of there because we don't want to break that. I think that's ebonite. And so we'll never get a replacement for that. So I want to take it off very gently. So I managed to get that little tip off of there by soaking it and heating it up and soaking it. It came off fairly easily. Here's the little rubber gasket. I'm going to put that on there. And then we're going to put this back on here on the end. And I'm eventually going to glue that on there with just a touch of crazy glue. Uh, on the very end, but I want to uh, check it inside the barrel of the pen first to see whether it's a, a good fit. So it's sort of like a dry run here. Put the tool inside the pen, screw the end of the shaft on the tool, and then pull it back down through the pen to see whether it works or not. So I actually had the wrong size. I thought it was the medium size. But there's the smallest size, and that's fitting perfectly. I've tried a number of times to get that packing out of there. But I've tried this in the barrel here. And I'm feeling a vacuum. Listen to this. That little bit of suction there. And I can feel it sucking on my finger. So it creates a vacuum there. And then releases it right there. And it's stuck to my finger. So I'm thinking... That I might not have to replace that packing after all if it's in good shape. I tried heating and soaking and banging and trying to knock it out and I'm afraid of breaking this barrel so if I don't need to replace that and this vacuum works without replacing that then I'm good to go. So I'm going to glue that tip on there with a little bit of crazy glue and then I'm going to work on the nib and, and reinstall the nib and then see whether it will actually fill up with ink. And if it works, then we'll go after polishing that celluloid. So now I'm just going to add a 
touch of crazy glue just put a bead right there the tip and touch it and that's it just to lock those threads down and there we go I've left the rod in the pen I'm gonna let that dry first and then I'll add a little bit of silicone grease to that and we'll try to seal it up and now that I've had this nib in an ultrasonic bath of pen flush for quite a while he got all that ink out of there you, you can actually see that that threaded end of the nib unit is clear it's one of the clear ones this nib will come off of that nib unit but it's perfectly aligned i have no reason to take that out of there so i'm going to polish this up let's look at it first and then i'll polish it up and there we are after just a little bit of polishing looks pretty good i'll probably polish it up some more but we're just going to test fit this now eventually i'll put this in the section of the pen and probably uh, shellac it down but we're going to sort of dry fit it for now so now i still have the tool attached to the rod and i'm going to add some silicone oil because i want lubricant not so much ink sealant here and i'm going to lubricate the rod as well it's a little drop on both don't spare the lube on the rod how do you know what heaven's like they make us look at a video every day while they're putting lube on the pitchfork well at least you get lube only on the middle prong just fyi spit is the devil's lube if you're late you don't get the spit and believe me charlie you want the spit i want the spit and it actually slides very nicely through here and it is still creating a vacuum and to remove the tool from the rod is holding it lightly with some vice grips there we go and then we're going to want to put the nut and the tiny end piece and the blind cap back on the nut on the rod and then we screw this i'm not going to glue this one i might have to take it apart again I'll screw that down as far as it will go there we go we put that inside and then we get our tool hello tool where are you there we are and we put the tool into the slots just like that should be able to screw it down there it seems to be working now we're going to screw this back in to the section and again i'm going to want to seal that down once everything's working right maybe i'll just test it with some water first to see whether I can actually get some fills. And there we go. I've got it absolutely full of water. Put it in the water, shot it down, got some bubbles, and I turned it back up again, unscrewed the blind cap, and pulled the piston back down again, and pushed it up until I got water, like that, holding the piston knob down, and then shot it back down into the water. I did that three times and I got it absolutely full of ink. You can't see it, but there was a small bubble in there that went back and forth like a level. So I'm going to now try this with ink. Now, before I fill it with ink, I wanted to show you how beautifully clear that barrel is. Isn't that gorgeous? Just that beautiful amber color. And before I ink it up, I'm going to weigh the whole pen first, and then when I fill it with as much ink as I can, I'll wait again and we'll see what the ink capacity is. And when I get it absolutely full, pull the rod back out again. Only do this if you're not squeamish. And I'm going to push it back up. More difficult over the camera. Pushing it back up until I see beads of ink. There, right there. I'm going to hold that piston from bouncing back because it's under a vacuum. Put it back in the ink. Do it again. And the third time is the charm. There's the bead of ink. And then we'll give the nib a try. I'm going to call this a 1946 Schaefer Triumph. And it has an extra fine 14 karat gold nib. And it's very scratchy in almost every direction. So I have some nib work to do on this pen. But lots of ink. Wonderful. The pen uncapped when it's full is 14.5 grams. And when it's empty, it's 12.5 grams, which means this holds a whopping 2 milliliters of ink. Marvelous. 
now to work on the nib. So now that I've got the pen working, and it's working nicely, and I've polished up that nib, and I've done some tuning on the nib as well, so it's writing fairly well, I'm going to polish up the barrel and the hardware. So you can see it's really, really tarnished. And this is what I'm going to do. Here is the pencil. And I've polished it up, just the hardware. The gold came up very, very nicely. There's that engraving. Love, Carleen. And the clip looked just like that. And the cap band looked just like that. So, we're going to clean that up. One of the things that happened while I was soaking the barrel for so long uh, is that that paint on that's on the inside of this engraving of Joey Canzanari's name was lost right there. So I'm going to try to restore that as well. I'm going to do the hardware first. There is certainly a lot of scratching as you'd expect for a pen that's this old on the celluloid. So we're going to clean up the hardware first and then go at that celluloid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this liquid metal polish and a cotton swab, and we're gonna go at that cap band and clip first. You can see almost immediately how all that tarnish comes up. Look at that. And onto the jewelry polishing cloth. And there we go, love is eternal. So now I'm going to work on some of that celluloid. I've decided not to be aggressive with it. I'm just going to polish it up. And then after I've polished it up, I'm going to try to refill that name. I'm going to leave some of these tooth marks in here. It is already so highly personalized. Might as well just leave the human imprints on there as well. It doesn't detract from the beauty of the pen. I'm going to use this Anderson Pens micro gloss number five this is like a polishing compound first time i tried this and then i'll follow it up with the micro gloss number one which is the finishing polish and here we are all polished up i think it looks pretty good these polishing compounds don't take out uh, deep scratches and things like that it's just for micro abrasions and things like that so there's still some vintage look to this pen, but it looks pretty nice. So now I'm going to see what I can do about getting that name back in there to make it look like this one. So there we are with Joey's name emblazoned again in yellow. It uh, kind of matches the other one. The other one was gold, but yellow is all I've got. I use this Craftsmart multi-surface premium oil-based paint pen. You just sort of dab it onto the surface and it quickly filled in all of those characters, but of course it slopped over in places and I just went at it uh, with some of this micro gloss while it was still fresh and it left the yellow in the divots but not on the surface. And here is the pencil all polished up, looking pretty good. And I think the set looks pretty good together. Very nice. Introduced in 1942, the Schaefer Triumph nib is one of the most unique nibs ever made for a fountain pen. The conical shape of the nib gives it a structural strength as well as allows for a larger feed with more fissures to control the flow of ink with changes in temperature and air pressure. Schaefer talks about the nib and feed of the Triumph in this promotional film from 1942. Here is something new, an exclusive engineering feature, the nib wraparound design. Wrapped around the outside of the feed, it gives extra strength to the barrel and spring and tension to the nib. The design of the new lifetime Triumph nib makes possible the giant size feed, the radial writing engine, with 19 large diameter fissures that control the flow of writing fluid under all pressure conditions. Obviously, no plastic sheath point could handle as large a feed because there simply isn't enough room. The gold sheath provides the room needed for a larger feed. When a pen is held in the hand, it becomes warm. As the pen gets warm, the air inside the pen also gets warm and begins to expand. As the air expands, it forces writing fluid out of the main reservoir. 
The warmer the air, the more writing fluid it forces out. The fissures in the feed absorb this writing fluid. When this happens to ordinary pens with few or no controlled fissures, a glob of writing fluid on the paper. Naturally, the pen with the largest safety reservoir, with more and better designed fissures, is the safest pen to use. What is true about changes in temperature is also true with changes of altitude. The higher the altitude, the more unequal is the pressure of the air inside the pen and out. At high altitude, held in this position, the fluid in the head of an ordinary pen would be forcibly expelled by the pressure of the air behind it in the pen. In the new lifetime triumph, a drain back permits the fluid to flow down from the head into the reservoir, and the expanding air can escape unhampered. In an airplane, a pen should always be opened in an upright position. Schaefer is a good high altitude safety pen. Another innovation on this nib is Schaefer's famous upswept nib tip design. Schaefer also highlighted that this upswept tip design allowed users to get line variation by turning the nip over and writing with it upside down. An exclusive engineering feature with us, the nib, the heart of the pen. The Lifetime Triumph retains the slightly turned up tip, gives a rocker feel to the pen, smooth, effortless writing in any position. A normal line when writing with the bottom of the nib, fine writing when the top of the nib is used. A custom-built nib to meet all writing needs. Schaefer introduced this nib in 1942 on the model they call the Schaefer Lifetime Triumph. It was introduced immediately following the bombing of Pearl Harbor and was only sold until 1944 as much of Schaefer's production was converted for wartime production and they had to retool for post-war production. The Triumph model was discontinued by the end of 1944, but the conical Triumph nib continued for many years to come. Overall, the cigar-shaped pen is just over five inches in length capped. This version of the Schaefer Lifetime Triumph is in striated brown celluloid with gold-filled hardware, and it has the white dot above the clip denoting the Schaefer Lifetime warranty. The clip dates this Triumph to the later years of production because it is spring-loaded, another innovation from Schaefer. Here is something basically new in pens. It's an exclusive feature the clip, a rigid arm of streamlined design with an inner steel spring construction taking all the tension, all the pressure. A clip that never weakens, never loses its gripping life. The wide gold cap band allowed for personalized engravings. Let's take a close look at this engraving. Look how deep and beautifully scripted this hand engraving is. The thick curves are called bright cuts and the squared serif ends are called square cuts and the thin cuts are called hairline cuts. Yes, they did do things with more attention to quality and detail 70 years ago. I guess we've become inured to accepting things like laser etching as acceptable quality these days. The cap unscrews with an incredible one quarter turn. And let's take a closer look at this nib. It is 14 karat gold, two-toned in gold and palladium, and has Schaefer's lifetime U.S. Reg Pat Off, which stands for Registered in the United States Patent Office, Made in the USA, and 14K. The feed is ebonite and extends deep into the section which is integrated with the nib, which is screwed onto the feed. The cap, cap band, and barrel are virtually flush with each other when capped. The barrel is hot stamped with W.A. Schaefer Pen Company, Fort Madison, Iowa, USA, made in the USA, and 1250. The 1250 is not the model number, but the price of the pen in 1945. The cap posts deeply and securely, and makes the pen remarkably well balanced in the hand. That shouldn't be surprising for the company that innovated the streamlined fountain pen and called it the balance. Unposted, the pen is just on the edge of being too short to write with for my medium-sized hand. Let's take a look at the pencil for a moment. It should be noted that pencils were the predominant writing instruments in the pre-ballpoint era. The Schaefer Triumph pencil had some innovations for users as well. To fill the pencil with 0.9 millimeter leads, you turn the top of the pencil clockwise until the metal rod sticks out the front. Then you turn it back and guide the new lead in from the front by turning the cap counterclockwise. 
Then you press the nib straight down on a hard surface to engage it with the clutch mechanism. And it turns in and out of the pencil at that point. The lead is continually extended by turning the top of the pencil clockwise as it is consumed. The top of the pencil pulls off to reveal the eraser head which can be removed and replaced and the extra leads can be stored in the internal chamber. Here is a Schaefer's green celluloid pencil from the 1930s for comparison. You can see this, the spade clip on it with Schaefer's stamped into the clip and the pencil is much longer but about the same thickness. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the 1945 Schaefer Lifetime Triumph in striated brown celluloid with a 1945 Parker Vacuumatic in azure blue pearl celluloid a 1946 Schaefer Triumph Tuckaway, a 1940s Eversharp Skyline, and a 1943 Esterbrook Model H in green celluloid. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see that the Tuckaway is quite short and can't be written with unless it's posted, but it's designed with the little tiny short clip here. Uh, to disappear into your pocket, hence the name Tuckaway. But it has the same size Triumph conical nib as on the Triumph Lifetime. This pen was restored uh, by Jack Hernandez. This pen was given to my wife Wynne by her grade 4 teacher who lived to 105 and bequeathed this pen to her when she passed away. You can see Charlotte's bite marks still remain in the cap, which we had Jack leave in for sentimental reasons. All of these nibs are 14 karat gold, except for this one on the Esterbrook, which is steel. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the 1945 Schaefer Lifetime Triumph. And it has a 14 karat gold Triumph extra fine nib. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet. It has a lot of feedback, but it's very smooth. I had to work on this nib a bit. I think it was a bit damaged, and so it took a lot of smoothing to get it to where it writes without any scratch. Now it has a good amount of feedback, as you'd expect from a extra fine nib. Here's a chart of Schaefer's nib offerings from 1942. And when I look at the thickness of this nib, it's uh, even more fine than an extra fine. And so I'm going to speculate that this is Schaefer's accountant nib, which is like an extra, extra fine. To get it writing wetter, I floss the nib with a 0 0.03 inch or a 0.76 millimeter gapping tool to spread the tines and allow the ink to flow more freely. And now it's writing very nice indeed. And the ink is, of course, Waterman's Serenity Blue. As to line variation, you can squeeze a little bit out of it, but these conical nibs were not designed to be flexible. In fact, the opposite. They were designed to be rigid, like the Parker 51 was designed to be rigid, so that you can press through multiple copies, or carbon copies, uh, to make prints. And the circular design of this nib inhibits flexibility. Schaefer expected you could turn the nib over and get a finer line. You can indeed get a much finer line almost needle fine by turning this extra extra fine nib over. And this nib makes a 0 
millimeter line which is a western extra extra fine or a Japanese extra fine on my Richard Bender line width chart which you can find linked in the description below and for our quote And for some reverse writing, as I showed you earlier, it's a lot scratchier, but it's a lot thinner and a lot drier as well. And some quick writing. No issues at all keeping up. So what are my thoughts on this restoration? Well, to say I'm thrilled with this restoration would be an understatement. Even if I had never found the actual original owner of this pen and pencil set, I would be pleased. Both the pen and pencil were in really dismal condition, tarnished and grimy, and the fountain pen was not functional at all. Now they're both as gleaming as brand new, but still retain some of the personalized patina of use, like the tooth marks on the blind cap, and especially the beautiful engraving of Love Carlene on the cap bands, and Joey's name emblazoned on the barrels. On behalf of Joey and Carlene Canzaneri, I want to wish all of you Ink Quarry Minds a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday Season, and a very Happy New Year. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. Plus the new feature of being able to get access to my videos as soon as they're uploaded without having to wait until they're scheduled. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. Merry Christmas. I made this.